Hello children, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to study about a poem named The Brook written by Lord Alfred Tennyson. This is a poem that traces the life of a brook or a small stream as it emerges from the mountain top and flows down the hills and across the valleys to empty into the river. The poet uses the brook to draw a parallel with the life of a man. Just like the brook, man is energetic, lively and moves swiftly when he is young but slows down later on his life. Just like the brook does before it empties into the river. Now before we go into the poem, let us go through a short introduction of the poet. Born on 6th August 1809 in Somersby, Lincolnshire, England, Lord Alfred Tennyson was the poet laureate during much of Queen Victoria's reign and remains one of the most popular British poets. He had written a number of poems like Ulysses in the Memoriam AHH etc and also excelled at penning short lyrics such as Break 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 the charge of the light bricket and crossing the bar. He was awarded the Chancellor's Gold Medal in 1829 at Cambridge for one of his masterpieces, Timbuktu. He is the frequently quoted writer in the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. He passed away on 6th August 1892 at Sussex, England and is resting at the Westminster Abbey in London. So let us now move into the poem and understand the first stanza. I come from horns of coot and hern, I make a sudden sally, and sparkle out among the fern to bicker down a valley. The poem begins with the speaker, the brook, describing its nature, announcing that it comes from horns of coot and herns. Now, Kutanhan refers to two different kinds of birds that live in marshy places and in stagnant water bodies like ponds and lakes. So the brook says that once it was a simple body of water before it started moving forward in a rush. The brook is going to undergo an interesting and meaningful transformation throughout the rest of the poem. The change starts in the second line when it makes a sudden sally which moves suddenly forward and down into the valley. Children, you can see that Tennyson uses personification throughout the poem, allowing the brook to speak for itself in a very human way. Now let's move on to the second stanza. By thirsty hills I hurry down, or slip between the ridges, by twenty tops a little town and half a hundred bridges. In this stanza children, we get to see some details of the stream's progress that it moves through the countryside. It experiences various different homes, locations and towns. It speaks about the hills, thorps, which are small villages and half a hundred bridges that it passes under. Okay. So now let's see the third stanza. Till last by Philip's farm I flow to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. In the third stanza, the brook describes how it comes across the farm owned by someone named Philip to join the brimming river. Now brimming river means an overflowing river. Now when the brook joins the overflowing river, it moves forward in its aging process. It is no longer a thin stream of water or a standing water in the marsh. Now it is stronger and much more powerful. The brook says that men will come and go, which means that they would take birth and then they would die. But the brook will always remain there forever. Its life is endless. Now children, let's move on to the fourth stanza. I chatter over stony ways. Chatter here means knocking together as if you are feeling cold or frightened. In little sharps and trebles. 
Now sharp and trebles means sudden shrill and high pitched voices. I bubble into edging bass. Edging bass means whirling inlets. I babble on the pebbles. Now babble is the sound of water running over the stones. So in this fourth stanza, the brook is narrating his own life on its way to join the brimming river. When the brook passes through the stones, it creates a sound which is similar to chattering sound. The water of the brook strikes against the stones and creates sharp notes which varies according to the speed of water. Sometimes a low gurgling sound is produced and some other times it seems to be a murmur but the brook keeps moving on.